As the screams of confusion and terror fill the crowd of heated confrontation between the protesters and the police, an unknown protester threw a stick of dynamite into the middle of total chaos in hopes of getting rid of the police. Policemen, in shock of the situation, fired into the night blindly because of the smoke, thus leaving eight of their own men and an unknown amount of protesters dead in the confusion. The 1800s and early 1900s were a terrible time to be working as a laborer. The pay was little to none, the conditions of the factories were poor, and there were very few labor safety laws. Minimum wage is the lowest a business can pay their workers by law. Minimum wage was non-existent until 1938. So during the time of these protests and riots, the plantation owners could pay the workers as little as they wanted. In some instances, the owners would pay their workers in clothing, leaving the workers and their families hungry. Another reason the workers protested was due to the loss of their jobs to German immigrants. But as mad as some protesters were, they did not plan on things getting as bad as they did. In some instances, people were injured or even killed in these altercations but all the sacrifices played an important part on the road to making better labor laws and their creation of minimum wage. A prime example of this is the Chicago Haymarket Riot of 1886. Working conditions and labor laws were terrible at the time, as well as the pay. Little pay for long, harsh working hours. It just didn't seem right to the workers. They held up picket signs with slogans like, eight hours for work, eight hours for rest, and shorten the hours and increase the pay. The two most famous organizers of the Haymarket Riot were Lucy and Albert Parson. Lucy was born into slavery and stayed a slave until sometime around the end of the Civil War. After the war, Lucy married a man named Albert Parson and later moved to Chicago to begin their lives together. During this time, Lucy worked writing and organizing women's sewing classes. Albert was an editor of the labor paper called The Alarm and was one of the founders of the Chicago Trades and Labor Assembly. On Sunday, May 2nd, 1886, Albert made the trip from Chicago to Ohio to begin organizing labor strikes there, while Lucy and the other members of the labor group stayed in Chicago to stage a peaceful march of around 35,000 workers. Lucy and the group that had stayed behind in Chicago had done several other rallies like this before with no harm to anyone involved. Unlike the other peaceful rallies Lucy had orchestrated, this scene quickly became violent when a Chicago policeman fired his weapon, killing a protester for making threats and using foul language towards him at the McCormick Reaper plant on Western and Blue Island Avenues. The news sparked outrage in the protesters and provoked a meeting which had already been planned for Haymarket Square for the evening hours of May 4th. Estimated attendance at the meeting was expected to be around 20,000 but less than 2,500 were present the day of the event. The Haymarket meeting was scheduled to begin at 7.30, but was delayed an hour due to unknown reasons. So most of the speakers failed to show up and were replaced by substitute speakers. As the meeting drew to an end and only about 200 people were remaining, the patrons attending the meeting were attacked by 176 policemen carrying Winchester rifles. Law enforcement opened fire on the attending activist after one of the speakers threatened violence towards the officers. After chaos set in, an unknown attendant of the meeting threw a dynamite bomb into the crowd gathered on Haymarket Square. Dynamite had been used in other protests before, but it was never used on such a major extent like this. The explosion caused the police to panic and shoot into the darkness, some firing on their own men. In the aftermath, seven policemen and four protesters were killed. All four of the protesters, along with six out of the seven policemen, died from gunshot wounds. One officer died due to the explosion. After the incident, martial law was declared in Chicago. Martial law means that the military is in charge of normal civilian functions of government. In Chicago alone, Labor leaders were rounded up by the police, houses were searched without warrants, and local union newspapers were shut down. The Chicago police eventually caught eight men who were chosen to be put on trial. Two of the accused men were Adolf Fiden and Louis Ling. Ling was a carpenter who was wrongly accused of throwing the bomb because he made about 30 to 50 bombs before Haymarket. 
The trial lasted two long months and is known as one of the most notorious trials in U.S. history. At one point during the trial, the Chicago Tribune offered to pay the jury if they found the eight men that were accused guilty. To no one's surprise, on August 20th, 1886, the jury found the eight men guilty and sentenced seven of the eight to death. Oscar Neby, the only man on trial who was not sentenced to death, was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. On November 10, 1886, Samuel Gompers, a union labor leader, came to Washington to try to appeal Governor Oglesby to change the sentences of Samuel Fine and Michael Schwab from death to imprisonment for life. Due to national and worldwide pressure to change the sentences, Oglesby granted Gompers wish. Fine and Schwab's are now going to spend life in prison rather than being sentenced to death. Also occurring on November 10th, Lewis Lang was found in a cell nearly decapitated from the explosion of the dynamite he had lit and put in his mouth. On November 11th, 1887, Adolph Fisher, George Engel, Albert Parsons, and August Spies were all hanged. Three of the eight accused men were still left in prison until June of 1893, when Governor John P. Altgeld pardoned the three men that were still alive and proceeded to condemn the entire justice system that allowed the injustice to happen in the first place. The Haymarket Riot is one of the biggest examples of freedom of speech, freedom of press, and freedom of assembly being taken from the people who were trying to make a better living. Up until 1986, when teachers were given the chance to correct school textbooks, important information and facts were left out. Without the events of the Haymarket riot and Haymarket trial, protesting laws, regulation, and civil rights would not have been put in place to protect the people and the protesters. The Haymarket riot helped aid in the establishment of an eight-hour workday law across the nation. This is an example of how triumph can come after a tragedy, even if it takes years to occur. Five score and ten years ago, here very spot. History was made, and we are here 110 years later to revive that memory, to keep it fresh. From this platform, or one close to it, ardent advocates of a revolutionary idea put it forth. It was called the Eight Hour Day. There was a song at the time long disremembered a popular song called eight hours for work eight hours for play eight hours for sleep in free america and so this is a way of paying you all tribute you and your fathers and mothers and all you represent for this battle